Okay, that didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. If you look at the list now, we've got 256 hearts, which is the hard limit for some reason. Usually it's 255, but that is the limit on money. And one thing I noticed as I was doing that, it took uh, maybe five minutes killing those gargoyles. I do not get experience killing enemies in the dungeon, which is probably smart. Since time doesn't pass here, I'm sure they assume that it didn't make sense for you to accrue experience because people could just farm up here, get super high level, and then just breeze through the game. So, at least we're maxed out on money, and we can proceed to forward. And I don't think I mentioned it when we got here, but one thing I do like about the mansions in general, one, all the, they all have different color schemes, and two, they have good music. I do like the, the theme of the, the mansions. It's very different from everything else in the game. It's pretty fitting, I find. Okay, that, those are fake blocks right here. Yep. Need to master the art of ledge jumping here. Here's clue number one. Only an oak stake will shatter the crystal ball. So that's a hint on how to clear the mansions. Now I gotta get all the way back. And I know there's some pitfalls around here somewhere. As you probably heard in other reviews of this game, using the holy water to sort of test out the floor as you proceed is pretty much how you get around the pitfalls, unless you commit them all to memory. I guess that's another one of the criticisms of this game. Whereas the older Castlevanias or the one that before this and the one that came after. The challenge came from having to figure out the best way through complex paths, learning enemy patterns, and uh, overall using skill. Castlevania 2's challenge comes from kind of cheap traps and or just tedium and repetition, which is doesn't really equate well to the idea of challenge. So. In that, that regard, I definitely see why a lot of people who were expecting sort of the, the next progression from the first Castlevania were disappointed by this one because it, it didn't really present the same challenges. And besides that and the, the cryptic nature of how confusing parts of the game can be, it's definitely, definitely valid criticisms, I think. So I imagine the, the updated version for Redaction here was meant to address some of the more cryptic things and some of the quality of life improvements like the, the text scroll, the day-to-night transitions, make for you know some improvements, welcome improvements. So this guy sells you a stake, as we saw from the last clue. Here's another book. Enter Rover Mansion to take back Dracula's heart. Double exclamation point. I think Rover is the second, second of the mansions. Anyway, what I was saying before is that hint on the previous screen told us we needed to strike the crystal orb with a stake. As you can see on the far right there, the one we bought from this guy for 50 bucks, 50 hearts, is what we need to move forward. At least now I can collect some additional parts and get close to topping out as I'm walking through here. Oh, there's another one in here. Find the hidden flame on Dobby's path. Okay. I cheated. I already knew that was there. But if you didn't, then and I believe that that clue was different in the original. It said something I think that was wrong. I wanna say it said like find a flame on top of a tree which isn't true and that 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 one always confused me back in the day okay pitfall here one indication is the skeletons won't fall through 
So if you see them stop suddenly and change directions, it's because there's a pitfall. You. Here is the final room of the mansion. The That's the crystal orb, so if you select the stake, hit up and B. Strike the orb. We get our first piece. We now possess... Eh, they fixed the typo too. It used to say possess whenever you got the body parts. So now it says, I have Dracula's Rib. Which is actually one of the best of the Dracula weapons to get in this game. It's a shield. And it'll deflect projectiles like the fireballs from this annoying fishmen. So that's great. Now, I wonder if I can just drop down through the fake floor. I don't know if it's above water. It's a problem. If I drop straight down, if I can take a shortcut out of here. Let's find out. Because I don't think there's anything to the right. The exception of, well, some of the mansions that have bosses, there aren't any treasures to get in each mansion, which is kind of disappointing. You basically go in, get the body part, and leave. 236. Yeah, we mostly made our money back. So I don't think I'm going to make a habit of farming in every single mansion. I think it'll just largely depend on how much money I have on me. And that, that would get kind of old, so... We'll just kind of see what happens as we go. So technically I didn't need the white crystal for that part, because the platform is there, you just can't see it. Um, I think what I'll do... Circle back, it's probably going to turn to night time in a second here. I don't think I can get down to the town with the Veros before nightfall, but I do want that dagger. Eh? Uh, it's probably going to do it as soon as I hit the stairs. Yep. Well, I can. I guess I can finish farming up in the town. Oh, there's bats in here. That's where the, the dagger guy was. Because off to the right is the lower part of Dobby's path, which... I think I can continue on, but I, I do want that dagger, so... And I can heal. So I think I'll hang out... I think I'll hang out here, kill some zombies, get what I need, then move on. Kinda sucks that I'm already topped out, so I'm not gonna get anything additional money-wise. And zombies do not give me experience, which is kinda lame. Actually, I wonder if the guys on the path do. I'm gonna check that out while I'm waiting. Because if I can gather some experience, then that won't be a complete waste of time here. See if these eyeballs. They do. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna farm up these guys for a bit while I'm waiting for it to turn back to uh, daytime. Ooh boy, that's not good. In fact, it might be safer just to do this. I do not want to... Oh, that's really... not want to lose a life here. The jumping is kind of tricky in this. You have to be pretty precise in judging distances. There's a section later where you're basically jumping on these floating platforms above a lake pretty notorious section of the game, and if you miss, you go into the lake, then you die instantly, and the, the blocks are incredibly far apart. That's, that spot's going to take me forever to beat. 
I remember it being pretty, oh boy, pretty frustrating back in the day. If I fall down there again, I'm going to die. After this, we can proceed up into the right. There's one more town before we hit the graveyard, if I remember correctly. 